We invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Mark, chapter number 7. The book of Mark, chapter number 7. Lord willing, we shall begin reading in verse 24 and read down through verse number 30. The subject seems to be the children's bread. The children's bread. Mark chapter 7, verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Brother James is talking about good behavior and doing things orderly and how that the preacher can't do things sometimes that are things that can be easily done by others because of the gospel. And you say, yep, that's what we want our pastor to do, but what if you had Jesus to hide himself from you for a while? Would it hurt your feelings? You say he's trying to ignore me. You have to be careful in dealing with a, a true gospel ministry to make sure that you're relating to Christ. And though you don't understand by experience what that pastor's going through, you pray for him. And even if you don't understand, you try to support it. And he entered into a house. We don't know whose house it was, don't really care because the Bible don't, don't, uh, don't mention it to us. And I don't try to look for things that the scriptures don't tell you. I don't know how long he stayed there, but I know that he had to arise from thence. He had to leave the location in order to leave the situation. You ever had to do that? Look back at Mark chapter 3. In verse 6. Mark 3, 6. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. What did Jesus do? But Jesus withdrew himself. Sometimes the preacher withdraws in order that he might preserve the gospel not so that he might take it away from you. Did anybody hear that? But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. And from Jerusalem and from Idumea and from beyond Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. This same song, second verse. The Pharisees have just chastised him and his disciples for making void the tradition of men. And he said, you make void the commandments of God by your tradition. And them not liking what he said, the disciples said, you do know that the, that the Pharisees are offended by this, don't you? They even, again, seem to take the other side and kind of sideways like rebuke Jesus and say, you're making them folks mad. Well, he knew that better than anybody. He knew the devil that was in them. And so this is what he did in verse 24 of Mark 7. He, from thence he arose from the location and from the situation. He enters into a house. We don't know whose. It don't matter. It received Christ. And he didn't want anybody to know it. <clears throat> but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Somebody heard. Somebody said, you know, the healer is over at my cousin's house, and here we go. And so this woman is not going to be denied. She's going to track him down. 
The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician. Now, that's a biblical word, and you just let it roll off your tongue like I did for a long time before I tried to find out just what in the world is a Syrophoenician. Acts chapter 2. Acts, Acts chapter, excuse me, 21 in verse number 2. Acts chapter 21 in verse number 2. Acts 21, 2. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenice, that's the, the, uh, the Phoenician, we went aboard and set forth. And when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria. There's your Syro. It's the part of Phoenice that was belonging to the nation of Syria. It's a long coastal area, but it was the Syro-Phoenician location. And we landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unburden, uh, unladen her burden. So Syrophoenician is that part of Phoenice that was had to do with Syria. Okay, want to help you read your Bible. Back to Mark chapter seven. The woman was a Greek, that is a Gentile, a Syrian Phoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. He didn't say first be fed. For it is not meat or fit to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. You can always tell in a restaurant when you come in and you see a high chair and tons of food on the floor, who was just there? Children get 90% of their food on the floor and on their shirt and about 8% goes in their mouth. You say, you're lacking 2%. We don't know where that goes. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. She wouldn't let Jesus have rest at this house, in verse number 24, until she had rest in her house in verse number 30. As far as I can ascertain, this passage, this event, is recorded by Matthew and by Mark. Mark gives us some things that Matthew doesn't. I thought it best because of the brevity of it to read it to you this morning out of the book of Mark. Mark was not there. He got his information from Peter. Matthew was there as one of the disciples, and he was writing firsthand. So there's the difference. One of them is like a reporter interviewing people and say, what was it like, and taking notes, that's Mark, and then writing a summary from all that he was told from the apostle Peter. But Matthew was there firsthand, and so his is uh, more lengthy and in different uh, detail. So here was this woman, and it's, it is a certain woman, and she has a young daughter. She is not asking for help for herself. She is asking for help from the fruit of her womb. That one that she's asking for help is not there yet. She's back in another location and in another place. The birth, I don't know how involved it was to cause the demonic possession, 
but the only relationship between the woman and the daughter was the birth. The daughter came forth from her, and now she's possessed with the devil. And she's not there present, pressing Jesus. She needs saving and healing from a distance. Because of things that I hope the Lord will help me make clear to you today, I see her as a picture of the Gentile church. The Holy Spirit has not come yet, and Jesus said, Go ye into all the world. He is here saying, I came to feed the children of Israel. So the woman of Greek pictures the Gentile church, and she's not there but for those that would follow. We, are, we were sometimes darkness, all of us Gentiles. We were not raised up under the law. We were not raised up under the training of Moses and the prophets. We were Syrophoenicians, kind of mixed breeds. But we had a problem. We were led about by the devil, by the powers of lust and his deception. And we lay yonder at a distance. Some of us on foreign shores, some of us 2,000 years away just got saved this couple of weeks ago. But we got problems. Syrophoenician woman, what a man, represents a bride, a Greek church, a Gentile church, going to have some offspring that's in bad trouble. Nobody can help us but the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's going to teach her a lesson and teach us a lesson as how to approach him as Gentiles. I hope before this day is over with. In Mark chapter 7 and verse 25, it said the daughter had an unclean spirit. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. To whom was the book of Ephesians written? The church at Ephesus. Ephesus. Is that inside the borders of Israel? What's the answer? No. no. So these are not Jews. Therefore they are Gentiles. The Gentile daughter had an unclean spirit. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he made alive or quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. If you were dead in trespasses and sins, then he made you alive in the spiritual realm. You were alive in the physical, but you were dead to God in trespasses and sins. Wherein, in those trespasses and sins, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. Read me down to the next comma, please. According to the prince of the power of the air. Listen. The spirit that even now worketh in the children of disobedience. Gentile believers were quickened by the Holy Ghost because they were spiritually dead. And we find out, dear soul, that it was, as it were, the person of Jesus of Nazareth with whom we have had no personal contact but has saved us from afar. Before, long before, America was discovered, much less gained her independence, the man, Christ Jesus, that this woman approached was already back in heaven. So she represents the Gentile church who has an offspring that is going to be led according to the prince of the power of the air. She is going to be dead in trespasses and sins. The spiritual man in her is unclean. All men, women or men, either one of either sex, have a spirit. It's an unclean spirit till God cleans us up. 
And it says in verse 3, among whom, among the children of disobedience, we all had our manner of life in times past. What were we doing? Fulfilling uh, uh, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Chapter 4 of Ephesians in verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye, next word, that ye, yes, what does that mean? Right from this point on, now that God has saved you and quickened you and, and saved you from your trespasses and sin, from now on, how is he going to tell us to walk? That ye henceforth walk negative, he's going to tell us what not to do. Henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. Wait a minute now. If it's other Gentiles, then we must be Gentiles too. But there's a henceforth with us. God saved us. So I'm still a Gentile, but I'm a born again Gentile. Thank you, sir. And I don't walk according to that course anymore. And the devil don't have sovereign authority over me like he used to. Christ Jesus now has come and, and, and been the stronger man than the devil. A strong man had me bound, but a stronger than he came and set me at liberty. God bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Listen. That you henceforth walk not as un other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. She had an unclean spirit. She represents us. She was at a distance from Jesus. Christ Jesus had his entire church upon his heart, upon his mind, on Calvary. He didn't just die for a Jewish church and then later, oh well, I'll add on the Gentiles. No. We were chosen in him from the foundation of the world. He tore down the middle wall of petition and made both one Amen. by his death on the cross. Because it was purposed that Jesus Christ would not be Israel's Messiah alone but he would be the savior of the world I just gave you the key to this whole thing about this woman having the understanding darkened that's where we were when we walked like these other Gentiles before we got saved we were alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart this is what her daughter represents chapter 5 of Ephesians verse number 8 would you please read me down to the first comma for ye were sometimes darkness do you find the word in i in in that phrase at all what does it not say it does not say ye were sometimes in darkness what was it you said you were sometimes darkness and Jesus in John 8 12 said I am the what of life so the Lord here hiding himself from the masses of Israel is found by a persevering woman not for herself but for her offspring her offspring was in a bad shape her offspring is not going to come and say Lord help me but she is going to say it on her behalf the Lord Jesus Christ dear soul is the savior of all men of all kinds he is not the Savior of all men without exception, for we know there's some already in hell. But he is the Savior of all men without distinction. I don't care if you're Chinese or Russian or Portuguese or what you are. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb of God will save you. Amen. Amen. And that don't mean just in the years 2000s. 
It means from the very beginning. What time doesn't matter. Nationality doesn't matter. What matter is, what matters is, do you have an interest in the atonement? If you do, where'd you get it? Because lost men don't care about the cross. Anybody listening to me today? So we find this soul that when the Gentiles, John chapter 12, that when this Gentile woman begins to press, she finds him in a house where he was hidden from Israel. It's kind of like a little, a little, uh, uh, what do you call them indentations in a lake where you can get out of the storm? Covert, culvert? Cove. Say it again. Cove. A cove, thank you. It's like a little cove where Jesus pulled his ship in and there prepared himself to hide from all else and be found by her. And, and believe you me, this gave this old Gentile opportunity of praise and thanksgiving this past week as I sought to crack this scripture. I, I, I can't do it. It's just Greek to me. It, and the Lord began to open it up and I began to see myself in it. That's when you've got something, when you can see yourself in it. But it's better to see it in yourself. See it inside of you. John chapter 12. Begin with verse 20. And there were certain what? Greeks. Greeks. What was this woman? Greek. A Greek. And there were certain Greeks. What's another word for what this woman was that also starts with a G? Gentiles. Gentiles. And there were certain Gentiles, Greeks, among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee. Galilee is of the Gentiles. You do understand that. And desired him, saying, Sir, we Greeks, we Gentiles, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus, I don't know what to do. You got to help me. I don't know what, whether to say this to him or not. What's the first word in verse number 23? Amen. It's a continuation of the thought. And, and the first four words are and Jesus answered them, right? Who did Jesus answer? Whom did Jesus answer? Philip and Andrew, right? You sticking with me? In other words, I don't care if you do have that little doodad behind the number 23. It says there's a new paragraph. You forget that doodad. Your Bible publisher put that on there. Maybe yours ain't got a doodad on it. Mine's got, looks like a, a P turned backwards with two with two, with two lines going up there. Listen, it don't matter about that. This is not a breakup of the thought. This is the person of the Lord Jesus answering Philip and Andrew concerning the message that they gave him that Gentiles were wanting to come to you. Now, what did Jesus say in answer to that news? And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. What does he mean by that? Verily, verily, surely, truly, I say unto you, except a grain, a corn of wheat, fall into the ground and die, die it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That which the Gentiles brought upon the Savior was an awareness of his death, burial, and resurrection. 
He is that corn of wheat. He is that seed of wheat that he has to die. You don't plant, dear soul, a roasting ear of corn into the ground. It'll rot on you. It has to die. Wait till it becomes hard and becomes seed. Dear soul, you don't take the flour that you made out of that fresh grain and put it in the ground. You ain't going to have anything come up. You're just wasting flour. You wait till the wheat dies and it becomes seed. Then you put it in the ground. Therefore, God said, I'm not going to abide alone. If God, the mighty maker, has to die, that's what I'm going to do for man, the creature's sin. If it requires everlasting life to die that I might not abide alone, I'm going to do it. Deep stuff, folks. And it was brought to his mind, not by Andrew and Philip, but by the presence of Gentiles. Now, does God change? I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. Amen. So if Greeks had this influence upon him here. In Mark 7. A Greek woman. Would have the same influence on him. There. Ta-da. Got your attention yet? Verse 32. When I stop reading me one word, just one now, it's a little bitty word, and, and, and part of it's got two letters. It ain't but two letters in it, one of them's used twice. Uh, John 12, 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw. Oh. Now, the next word's not in the original, but it's there for clarity. It doesn't hurt anything. All men unto me. He begins to talk about his death, burial, resurrection, ascension. And he said, that's what I'm going to do. God's going to die. And the Gentiles are those that's going to come in too. Because I want, you to, I want you Jews to understand something. I have sheep you know not of. Another foal I have. And I'm not going to leave a single one of them out. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, Jew or Gentile. And if you come, I won't cast you out. Isn't that good? That's better than Kentucky Fried Chicken. Listen, John 3, 17. Are your minds being open yet? John 3, 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How many times did you say it? And what was your word? World. Hmm. So the sending of the son into the world evidently was for the saving of of the world that is all kinds of people throughout the ages and throughout the nations chapter 4 and verse number 42 when I stop you finish the verse okay John 4 42 and he said unto the woman now we believe and said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy sayings. That is so pitiful. Okay. How many of you do have Bibles? Okay. The book of John. Chapter 4. Verse 42. When I stop reading... Uh, you finish the verse, smart aleck preacher. All right, listen. 
and said unto the woman, Now we believe. Not because of thy saying, for we have heard in ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. What nationality was speaking? Samaritans. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, but God does. Ain't you glad? And a certain Greek came to him. Hmm. We've got another example of that. The Greeks came to Philip. We would see Jesus. He said, I don't know so much about that. I'm kind of scared to go tell him. Let me go talk with my brother and see what he thinks. He said, well, let's both of us go tell him. Because they're not going to leave us alone. Let's go tell him. Bam. As soon as he heard it, he said, my hour's come. It put him immediately to his crucifixion. You do understand that while the Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross, you were on his mind. Ain't God good? So the Samaritans said, he is the savior of the world. God said, I didn't send my son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 6, verse 33. Here is Jesus Christ himself telling you what the twofold description, definition is for the bread of God. For the bread of God is, number one, he which came down from heaven. It's already dealt with that in John chapter 3 talking to Nicodemus. And number two, and giveth his life, three words. Unto the, world. Unto the what? World. That's Jesus Christ saying that. The definition of the bread of God is he comes from God. Now, if your bread didn't come from God, you ain't got the bread of God. Number two, he gives his life for the entire world. Hmm. If you got a Jesus only religion, you know, Jewish Jesus only, you ain't got the bread of God. Because this bread came down for anybody had a hunger. Blessed is he that hungereth and thirsteth after what? Righteousness. Shall be filled. Ain't God good? Verse 51. John 6 and verse 51. Now, are you going to go wimpy on me or are you going to stick with me? <laughs> All right, here again, I'm going to stop. You can finish reading the verse. Are you ready? John 6, 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Which I will give for the life of the world. You know, the free willers and those people who say that Jesus died for all men. Don't scare me at all reading these verses. And I tell them, yeah, Jesus died for all kinds of men. But he didn't die for all men without exception or there wouldn't nobody be in hell. Right. Well, they just didn't believe. Wait a minute. Did he die for all the sins of all men? Then in unbelief a sin? Mm -hmm. Then if he died for all the sins of all men and one of the sins is unbelief, nobody would be in hell. But he didn't die for all the sins of all men without exception. He died for all the sins of those that the Father hath given him from the foundation of the world. And they would be throughout the world. National borders don't prevent them. The time they lived does not make them uh, more accessible to him or put them away from him. 
the woman's daughter wasn't here. She got healed. I wasn't there. You wasn't there. But bless God, here we are, saved by His power divine. Saved by His grace divine. Ain't God good? God come to where you was. My soul. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 10. Dear soul, you, you, you need not let your religion get in the way of your understanding of Christ. First Timothy 4, verse 10. Well, verse 9 says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Whether you be Calvinist or Armenian or whatever you be, free will or don't make no difference. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of Amen. all men. And then it kind of throws you a curve, especially of those that believe. Now you can't put this one down and say who is the Savior of all kinds of men. This one says that word Savior is talking about one who preserves natural life because the devil would have killed all of human beings if he could have. And so this, this verse tells you that Jesus Christ is the one that sustains all human life, but he especially and with grace sustains those that believe. You like them apples? Look it up. 1 John 4.14 You didn't know you were going to have to do a Bible study when you come to church, did you? How terrible. We had to study the Bible at church. We want to see a dog and pony show. 1 John 4.14 And we have seen and we do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ came to die for more than just those that was around him that day in Israel. He left Israel and went into the land of Tyre and Sidon in Syria, the Phoenicia of Syria, Syrophoenicia. There he runs into, by chance? Are you kidding? There ain't no such thing as chance or fate or luck. It's all ordained of God. And God would have this woman be born at this time, get married when she did, live in the area she lived in, and be on the grapevine of gossip. Hello. Says she heard he was in the area. Nobody was supposed to know it, but she was real good at getting information out of people when it when it pleased her. And that wasn't just because she's a woman. Ladies, don't take all that by yourself. But God had ordained it. And just like the Greeks in John chapter 12 that came and said we would see Jesus, so God had this woman positioned there to come when he was attempting to hide himself but he couldn't be hid. And she comes to present him with that which was not even there in her own person because it was not yet time for God to go out into the Gentile world until Pentecost came. And there, there is in Acts chapter 13, maybe we can turn to that right now, book of Acts chapter 13, until there was a denial of, of the Lord Jesus by the Jews. Now I don't know where I'm going here. Let's see. Acts chapter 13 and verse number 14. <clears throat> 
But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Presidia. There's two Antiochs. This is one's in Presidia. And went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. All right, who do you imagine it was in the synagogue? If it had a synagogue, it had to be the Jews. And after the reading of the law and the prophets and the, ru the rulers of the synagogue said unto them, saying, sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exaltation for the people, say on. You better be careful doing that or else you better bring your lunch. Verse 22. And here's the, is the middle, some the excerpts of Paul's sermon. Uh, it says in verse 16, then Paul stood up. And then in verse 22, and when he had removed him, that is Saul of Kish, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Verse 26. Men and brethren, not only brethren, but men, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you that you feareth God to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled the scriptures in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. Verse 40. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. In Habakkuk 1.5 it says, Behold, Ye despisers, wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogues, the Gentiles sought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. It's beginning to change. It's going from unbelieving Jews over to Gentiles who are hungry. Blessed are they that hunger. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuading them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But folks, they weren't all of one mind. Listen. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with Envy. That's a demonic characteristic. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it, is, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Didn't Jesus use that word to the woman? Let the children first be filled. It is necessary that it come to you first. But listen, verse 46, very important. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, read me the rest of the verse. You can't feed anybody that's not hungry. On Thanksgiving Day, when you headed to Grandma's house, the horse knows the way to carry the sleigh uh, through, the, through the open fields and across the snow and all that stuff. If that horse stops at McDonald's and y'all load up on Big Macs, it don't matter how much she has toiled and labored. If you ain't hungry, you ain't gonna eat nothing. They were first filled and I've heard some of y'all I'm telling you I've never seen people eat like y'all do it's amazing <laughs> at the poultry roasting comments like I don't think I'll ever have to eat again did you know what you just said 
when you get so full, you don't want any more to eat. God said, I did it. I filled the children first. Now they've had enough of it. And the only hungry people I can find are the Gentiles. He couldn't sit down and eat. He couldn't find a place to rest. He had to sneak out of town, go to another city, enter into a private house, the secret house. We don't know whose it was, where it was. I don't know how long he stayed there, but he couldn't be here. Why? Because there was a hungry, sorrow, Phoenician, Gentile woman that had a hunger urging her so greatly she couldn't leave the bread of life alone. We need to be careful, folks. We have these fine gospel meals provided for us. You don't come over here without hearing the gospel. Say you don't. Say, say that you come over here and don't hear the gospel. I'll throw something at you. I know better than that. You, you hear the gospel if you come here. But if you ever get enough of it, had a woman come all the way down from Tennessee, rent a car, come all the way down here, just spend one weekend with us, just to sit under the sound of the gospel. Got a brother in Missouri who texts me two or three times a week telling me, I'm so thrilled to be able to go online where y'all are and listen to these messages. He said, that's all the bread I get. Dear soul, be careful. Don't ever get so full that you don't have a hunger for somebody to tell me the old, old story one more time. Amen. And in verse 46, he said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation unto the what? Ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. And when the what heard this? Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. You can't do nothing about that verse. It don't say as many as believe God ordained. Turn around and right quick, go write their name down in the last book of life. No. That which caused the effect of believing was those were ordained to eternal life. They believed. Were they Jews or Gentiles? There's, there's no distinction made. Those who were ordained to eternal life have a hunger for God. These are they that follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth. They won't let up on Him. The, the, these people are taking the kingdom by force. They, they, can't, they, can't quit, they can't quit pressing into the kingdom. they got to have Jesus. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the regions. region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expel them out of their coasts. But Paul and Barnabas shook off the dust of their feet against them and came to Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. You do realize that according to Romans chapter 11, it took a nation rejecting what you love for it to come to you. 
just in the history of the world, you do realize that persecution in Europe is why the explorers and the settlers came to America. That which others hated, denied, and rejected came to you. Now, what will happen if we now take their place and we begin to get bored with it, enough of it, fill with it, so that we don't want it anymore. I'm never going to eat again. I'm so full. I'm never going to eat again. When I hear people say that, I say, let's go get a milkshake. And they say, Ugh. don't ever get that way about the gospel, dear soul. That's how you got it. That's how it will leave you. That's how it will go on beyond you. For the apostle tells us, listen, if God did not hesitate in breaking off the natural branches, he won't hesitate in breaking you off that's been grafted in in their place. The brother talked about it this morning, loving the Lord with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Listen, folk, this thing can't be just a matter of mental hunger for information. It's got to be a matter of spiritual love to God himself. That's what it's all about. I want to leave you with this. Mark, excuse me, Matthew chapter 15. I want to leave you with a question. Matthew chapter 15. Verse 21. Are we there yet? All right, Matthew 15, 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Read me the first sentence in verse 23. Matthew was there. This is a on the scene account. Mark wasn't there. Peter told him about it. He got all the information and wrote down what Peter said. Both of them are absolutely accurate. And neither one of them are contradictory to the other. You just have it given to you from a different perspective. Now, he answered her not a word. And the disciples picked up on it and said the same thing to Jesus that they said about the people that was wanting to eat when the boy just had five fish and two, what, oh, two fish and five barley loaves. Listen in the rest of verse 23. And, continuation, his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. That's what they said in Mark 6, 36. Send them away. We don't want to give them the physical bread and he feeds the 5,000. We're supposed to be on vacation and here she is and we don't want her to have the spiritual bread. And to both of them they say, send them away. For she crieth after us. Now, here's a question I want to ask you. You can shut your Bibles if you want to. It's over. But here's a question I want to ask you. Why did Jesus not answer her a single word? You say, well, she's a Gentile. That won't hold water. Go back to Luke 7, 1 through 5. The Jews came to him and said, Cornelius, who is he? A Roman centurion. A what? 
He, he is a, a, a high up officer, high ranking officer in Caesar's army. Yeah, and he's worthy because he built us a synagogue. And Jesus told him he had great faith that he ain't never seen in Israel. So you can't have it that he was that she's a Gentile. So he said, "I ain't gonna talk to her. That won't do." What about the woman at the well, the Samaritan? They marvel that he even talked to her, but he laid it all out to her, and he even said to her, "I that speak to thee am he." I want you to go to lunch and tell me when we come back why Jesus wouldn't talk to this woman at first and he answered her not a word in so much that the disciples picked up on that attitude and said get rid of her but he didn't there's something for us Gentiles in how we approach Christ amen I can see the smoke coming out your ears <laughs>